So thanks to Miriam Hare, thanks to Michelle Miller, thanks to Lauren Palmer, thanks to Zach Seeley, thanks to Christopher Stokes, thanks to Robin Barthes, thanks to Dan White, and thanks to all you guys for being here at the third annual Brooklyn Social. Hi everyone, I am Olsa Stoney, uh, I teach feminist and political theory for the Brooklyn Institute, uh, and I'm going to be doing the first of a few lightning lectures tonight. Um, so I'm going to talk about maintenance, uh, and talk about maintenance with reference to two figures, uh, the feminist artist Meryl Lederman Newblaze and the political theorist Hannah Arendt. So, in 1968, the artist Meryl Lederman Euclid had a child, and suddenly people stopped talking to her about art. She felt she had become a different class of human being, a mother. So, in 1969, she wrote the Manifesto for Maintenance Art. The Manifesto challenged art's emphasis on development, innovation, novelty, creativity, and the avant garde. It drew attention instead to the processes of preservation and care and connected her work as a mother to her work as an artist. It's long, but I'll read just a little bit of out here, and if you're interested, you can find it online. Uh, so she's about maintenance. Keep the dust off the pure individual creation, preserve the new, sustain the change, protect progress, defend and prolong the advance. Renew the excitement, repeat the fight. Show your work, show it again. Keep the contemporary art museum groovy. Keep the home fire burning. Maintenance is a drug. It takes all the fucking time. The mind boggles and chafes at the boredom. The culture confers lousy status on maintenance jobs. Minimum wages, housewives, no pay. And throughout her career, Nicholas continued to explore different dimensions of what she called maintenance art. So she scrubbed the floors of museums. She asked questions uh, in surveys. She had to ask people, how much time do you spend doing maintenance work? How do you feel about doing it? How do you feel about other people doing it for you? What is the relationship between maintenance and freedom in your life? And in 1976, she became the artist in residence of the New York City Department of Sanitation, a position, a position she created uh, with the department and held for decades. She made many pieces of art uh, in conjunction with sanitation workers in the department, and one of the most famous uh, is her touch sanitation performance, where she shook the hands of uh, 8,500 New York City sanitation workers, saying to each of them, thank you for keeping New York City alive. <laughs> uh, so what I want to talk about, uh, what I want to talk about today, there isn't just her fantastic group, but uh, the concept of maintenance itself. And in an era when innovation, disruption, and novelty are endlessly celebrated, the questions she asked remain crucial. What is maintenance? Who does it? What is the relationship between maintenance and freedom? Uh, and maintenance, of course, isn't innovative or disruptive. It's the contrary. The point is to keep things more or less as they are. Things fall apart, and maintenance holds them together. Uh, that, it turns out, takes a lot of work. It takes dirty work, boring work, work that tends to be undervalued and unrecognized. And the question of how to deal with those necessary but inglorious tasks has been one of those enduring ones of social philosophy. Uh, it's discussed by thinkers from Aristotle to Karl Marx, but today, as I said, I'm going to talk about Hannah Arendt and her book, The Human Condition. So the human condition is organized around an analysis of three kinds of activity that she considers fundamental to the human condition. Uh, and those are labor, work, and action. Uh, so labor and the activity necessary for the maintenance of life, uh, the regeneration of the life processes. It's a constant, unending fight against the processes of growth and decay. It's the toil and trouble of daily life. It's relentlessly repetitive. The whole household of nature, Rand writes, swings perpetually in an unceasing, indefatigable cycle that constantly wears down human enterprise. Staying alive is a constant struggle. Nothing labor does lasts. Labor is private, but in the household and away from public view. Work, by contrast, creates an artificial and durable world of human things. Work masters nature for human ends, its production, building, creating, making. Uh, but as things are used, they eventually work wear down. And so she thinks that the most permanent and durable work is the work of art. Art isn't used by living creatures, it's not touched by biological processes. 
as the dog is far from the cycles of labor and nature as it can get to the worldly object. And then there's action, the only truly political concept. Politics consists of man's capacity to act, to act together and in concert. It is to take initiative and to begin. It requires courage, heroism, speech, and especially other people. It's performance for others in the public realm. You can't really act politically alone or in private. It's also unpredictable. Action is true human freedom. The freedom to start something new, to break out of the repetitive cycles of nature. So what does this have to do with maintenance? It's easy that Arendt's category of labor maps pretty neatly onto what you believe the means by maintenance, and her question about the relationship between necessity and freedom uh, is the one that usually is asked about maintenance and freedom. And you know, Arendt looks to ancient Greece and Rome, where public life was made possible only after the much more urgent needs of life and self have been taken care of, as she puts it. The ancients attempted to free some men entirely of the relentless repetition of labor by making others slaves. And she criticizes the violence of division, but she also worries about the creep of labor and the processes of life in the contemporary politics. Politics takes place for her as for the agents in the space beyond necessity. And she reaffirms the distinction between the public and the private, between the activities related to a common world and those related to a maintenance of life. But can these distinctions hold? Our common world, our common thoughts today are fundamentally concerned with the maintenance of life. The dream of liberating ourselves from which the toil and trouble of labor is possible is still a worthy one, but to imagine that we can liberate ourselves altogether is a fantasy. If you're not doing any maintenance work, you're probably just leaving it for someone else. So perhaps rather than just a fantasy, as weird as, as political theorist Wendy Brown puts it, perilously close to mythology in this attempt to avoid touching and contamination. And the pathological avoidance of touching is, of course, the exact opposite of something like Eubulus' touch sanitation performance. Uh, what do we say down there? Um, and in general, maintenance art rejects the lines that are in draws. It celebrates its heroic and mundane and often unpleasant work that keeps us all alive and maintains us as individuals, as a city, as a society. It makes the labor of maintenance, which runs thought private, into the public sphere and makes it political. It makes a cyclical, boring, repetitive labor of staying alive into a lasting work of art. As Euclid once declared, my working will be the work. Arendt associates action with new beginnings, demonstrations, performances, true moments of politics are fleeting, ephemeral, and eventful. And Euclid seems less interested in the political action than what comes afterwards, as she wrote in the manifesto, the sour ball of every revolution. After the revolution, he's going to pick up the garbage on Monday morning. <laughs> But the other sour ball is how exactly the revolution comes into being, and I think maintenance helps us understand politics, too. It helps us understand the labor that makes these extraordinary moments of political action possible, the work of organizing, nurturing relationships, keeping ideas alive so they're ready to spring into action when needed. And it also takes a lot of maintenance to keep political gains intact. All political victories are temporary, as we are learning only too well. We have to repeat the fight again and again, preserve the new, sustain the change, protect progress, defend, and prolong the advance. So in closing, sustainability has been the watchword of the environmental movement in recent years, so much so that it seems almost meaningless. And instead, I want to propose that maybe maintenance is a better way of thinking about the task of sustaining life. If we want to continue to be sustained by the Earth, we'll have to do a lot of what Euclid calls Earth maintenance. And she turned the fresh fields land to sell into a public park, and this is in progress, and you'll be able to visit it sometime soon. Uh, but work to keep alive the ecosystems that keep us alive in turn. We'll have to maintain the infrastructure and public services that help us live more lightly on the earth. So we're using trains, of course, but also parks, community centers, and institutions for the arts, perhaps even the Brooklyn Institute for Social Research. <laughs> Maintenance cuts across the gendered connotations and concepts of reproduction. It can encompass everything from caring for children to throwing away the city's garbage. We just really need to value and recognize our work and to make freedom and creativity possible for the people who do it. So in closing, I would like to thank everyone in the city who does maintenance work, caretakers, gardeners, sanitation workers, domestic workers, organizers, and many more. Thank you for keeping New York City alive.